Hi guys, this is Sokan Golami, and in this video, I'm going to talk very briefly about R2R Voltage Mode Digital to Analog Converter, from design to schematic and to layout. Here's the schematic for an R2R Voltage Mode DAC. From any node, if we look into the circuit, the coolant resistor is 2R. So this allows us to divide the circuit into different sections with different voltages by using series and power resistors. The connection between the resistors and high voltage or ground is done through a transmission gate, which is the combination of a PMOS and NMOS having both their gates connected to a common node and their drains connected to another common node. The source of the NMOS is connected to ground, while the source of the PMOS is connected to a high voltage level. When the incoming voltage to the gate of both transistors is high, NMOS turns on and connects its drain to ground, and when the Incoming voltage is low, PMOS turns on and connects its drain to a high voltage. Connecting the transmission gate circuit to our resistive circuit gives. Now we're ready to use our digital to analog converter. However, there is a big problem we need to address. This circuit cannot be used directly as a voltage source for another circuit with, let's say, a load. This circuit is a resistive circuit and any load connected to it will change the performance principle of the circuit. To tackle this problem, we can use a negative feedback op-amp. An ideal op-amp has a zero output impedance, which means the impedance of the load doesn't change the output voltage of the device. Also, in an ideal op-amp, the input voltage offset is zero, which means if we use it in negative feedback configuration, it acts like a buffer. So, for the whole circuit to be a nice behaving DAC, we need to design an op amp that acts as close to ideal op amp as possible. For our design, what we need is for the op amp to have a low offset voltage, high gain, low output impedance, decent stability with phase margin of 50 degrees, and capability to work with voltages ranging from zero to reference voltage linearly. To be able to work in the full range of input voltage, we better use a PMOS as our, as our first stage transistor so that feeding zero voltage to it is possible. For the stability, we make use of an RC circuit as a phase compensator in the last stage. And at the end, everything is fine-tuned to give us the requirements. One challenge in DAC design of R2R circuit is monotonicity. The challenge is when the input is increasing while the output could actually go down or not increase. To tackle this problem, one can increase the size of the resistors used or reduce the resistance of transmission gate by increasing their width to smoothen the current flow in the circuit. Once this level is done, it's time to design the layout from the schematic design. When designing the layout, one should pass two important tests. DRC test, which tests if the design is in accordance with the fabrication standards of the manufacturing company and the rules of thumb in CMOS layout design. And the second test is the LES test that checks the compatibility between the design schematic and the layout. Once completed, Cadence allows us to have an extracted version of our design, which can include the parasitic resistors and capacitors. These parasitics come from the non-ideal connections and physical presence of materials in the design. This extracted version somewhat represents an actual output of our design, and by running tests on it, we can make sure that our initial design requirements are still valid. Thanks for watching.